Top 10? The only 10, right? Because how many Valentine horror movies can there actually be? Let's find out. We've actually tallied a solid list of 10 horror thrillers that happen to be set on Valentine's Day itself. Now, some spend the entire day reveling in lovelorn lethality, and some merely glance past the February 14th date. But in just about every case, old Cupid's shooting an arrow in the head, if not the heart. Here are the top 10 Valentine's Day set horror thrillers. Before Anna Faris was spoofing scary movies and wooing the world as the house bunny, she happened to stroll down Lover's Lane, a listless paint-by-numbers slasher flick about a man who went on an indiscriminate murder spree on Valentine's Day 13 years prior, only to return to the town and stalk and slash the victim's children, foully disemboweling them with his hook-handed murder weapon. Lover's Lane refers to a place for lovebirds to park their cars and make out, which is where the sadistic slasher shows up for slaughter, hence the tagline there's no such thing as safe sex. Now this is clearly a bad and poorly made movie, but far more fun for ardent slasher completionists than one might expect. Now I can't be the only 10 or 12 year old one besieged by the intervenant run of My Boyfriend's Back on HBO, can I? Not buying it. Thing is, I always dug the lighthearted tone and slapstick humor, almost playing like a best of a cheesy Tales from the Crypt episode crossed with a zanily cartoonish Sam Raimi flick. It's a perfect intro for budding preteen horror fanatics. Love that stuff. Of course, it would take decades to realize the film was directed by Bob Balaban, bringing his own mordant sense of humor to the flick, a la Parents. Granted, it would have been killer to see what Peter Jackson could have done with the script. He was offered to direct, after all. Props to late greats Ed Herman and Phil Hoffman for appearing in the film, and for McConaughey for making his big screen debut. I can't lie to you, I adore Valentine far more than most. Yes, it's abjectively terrible, but so what? It has a damn good bit of fun knowing just how derivatively lame it is. Moreover, the first time you see it, I'd argue the mysterious whodunit element of the plot actually works more than many of its ilk. Look, I love slasher flicks so much that I have the lowest bar of expectations to enjoy one. Just give me a gaggle of deplorably annoying teenagers, a cool location, and a unique array of death styles, and I'm a happy boy. To this end, Valentine checks off the most basic of slasher film rubrics, boasting a plotline about a rejected childhood Valentine's Day suitor out to vengefully violate his female deniers, decades later. The cherubic cupid mask is a cute touch, but nothing tops Denise Richards getting drilled by the killer in a hot tub harder than Charlie Sheen. Also known as X-Ray, as well as Be My Valentine or Else, the little-known obscure early 80s slasher flick Hospital Massacre just might be your required homework assignment for the week. As in, see this movie, okay? Why? It features a vilely vengeful Valentine's Day subplot in which a gorgeous gal, Barbie Benton, visits an LA hospital for a routine checkup only to be horrifically hunted by a sick psychopath in OR Scrubs who she jilted on Valentine's Day 19 years prior. It's essentially the plotline for Valentine, but directed with beguiling verve by the Israeli madman Boaz Davidson, who also did The Last American Virgin. Oddly, the movie was made and released in Mexico in 1981, but had to wait until April of 82 to arrive stateside. Props to Shout Factory for issuing Hospital Massacre on Blu-ray as a double feature with Schizoid. Okay, so of all the flicks on our list, this one portrays Valentine's Day with the least amount of romantic prominence. And yet, technically, Ponty Pool is indeed set on Valentine's Day as a deadly viral outbreak threatens the small Ontario town on February 14th. What's so coolly original here, other than the kick-ass performance by stellar Canadian actor Stephen McHattie, is how the aforesaid virus is detected through radio transmission, as a shock jock radio DJ begins filtering ferocious bits of info through his airwaves as the night wears on. Half of the flick takes place in the claustrophobic radio station, the other half in the Canadian frigidity, with the sum total likely equating the most unique Valentine's Day horror flick to date, using the unofficial day of love as background to explore the threat of universal death. So don't move and you just stay there and we're gonna- Cannibals and some of them are naked and- Real talk here, the fifth episode of Hulu Originals Into the Dark series, Down, is a deeply duplicitous two-hander that gets stronger as it progresses, setting up a wildly unpredictable finale that atones for a few early cliche-ridden scenes. Directed by Daniel Stamm of The Last Exorcism, the story centers on a man and woman who happen to get stuck in a parking lot elevator after hours on a three-day holiday weekend. Valentine's Day coincides with President's Day here. Of course, it turns out this was no accident at all, but rather an elaborate kidnap and hostage scheme plotted by the man in order to bed his stocked-upon female obsession. 
a solid back and forth cat and mouse match of wits that pays off handsomely and horrifically. Codify it a crime thriller or gangster picture all you want. The semantic argument does not change the fact that a real life massacre took place at the hands of mafia magnate Al Capone in 1929 Chicago. That is, swap the Tommy guns for knives and you'd easily have one of the gnarliest real life horror stories of all time. The gist? Simple. In order to strike his most formidable foe, Bugs Moran, Capone orchestrated a sneak attack in which he sent his men in hot, guns ablazing, disguised as policemen until his rivals were mowed down into a gory morass of bone, blood, and viscera. The great Roger Corman directs, but the real reason to see the flick is for the powerhouse performance of the late great Jason Robards as Capone. Few filmmakers have conjured such a mystifying air of ambiguity the way Peter Weir did with his lyrical curio, Picnic at Hanging Rock. Having seen the flick for the first time fairly recently, the story about three students and their school teacher suddenly disappearing while taking a walk on Valentine's Day in 1900 is a fascinating movie mystery as I've ever seen. Part of this is due to the pacing, putting us in a time and place where time moved like molasses, which lends a kind of eerie hypnotic quality to the viewing. The unspeakable haunting of the townsfolk trying to solve what happened feels palpable, and we're just as vexed trying to piece together the maddening puzzle ourselves, all the while steeped in the beauty of Australia. One of the most difficult original versus remake face-offs we've seen in the past has to be that between My Bloody Valentine and its three-dimensional redo in 2009. It's a tough call as certain aspect of Patrick Lussier's version, about a psycho killer in a miner's mask slaughtering Pennsylvania town folk on Valentine's Day, actually reigned supreme. The whodunit mystery is just as nicely maneuvered as it is in the original, keeping us guessing the identity of the killer all the way to the end. The acting goes a long way towards preserving the mystery, and the resplendent grue of the uncut version rivals the uncut version of the original, where the unflinching profusion of graphic gore was forced to be excised by the MPAA on both accounts. Simply put, My Bloody Valentine 3D is the rare case of a remake being on par with its predecessor, the original of which ranks... Number one with a damn bullet. Indeed, the one and only definitive Valentine's Day horror film, George Myhalka's My Bloody Valentine really deserves rank as one of the all-time best slasher films as well. At least 1980s slasher flicks from which the majority of them derive. In addition to brilliantly setting the film on a holiday meant for lovey-dovey romance and horny courtship, thereby subverting the happy holiday in favor of something far more sinister, the setting of an underground mine is a sheer stroke of genius. It gives the murderer reason to don the mining mask and gives us reason to organically guess who among the miners is moonlighting as a pickaxe-wielding murderous madman. The iconic heart-shaped candy box filled with a carved out heart, or a gruesomely decapitated head lolling around in a washing machine, both of which were affectionately called back by Lucier in the redo, easily prop My Bloody Valentine as the most beloved February 14th horror salvo to date. <laughs> 